Seven months ago, I uploaded a tutorial on how to attach an embroidery on objects like caps, clothes, etc. As I promised, in this video, I'll show you how to create embroideries in Blender from scratch. And as always, the link of the final project file is in the description. Let's get started. Okay, first off, first we need a reference image. I'm going to do that by pressing Shift A and going for image section and choosing reference. Then just find your reference image from here. I'm just going to add this one. And now I'm going to press Alt R to reset the rotation of this object and press S to scale down just like that. I press the point or period on my numpad to just zoom in. And I press G and Z to move it down a little bit just to have some space to work. And after that, I press 7 on my numpad to go to the top view. And basically, we are going to model this. In this tutorial, I'm just going to model the A letter. And if you want to model anything else, you will learn how to do that by the end of this tutorial. So don't worry. And the first step of modeling this is adding a plane. I press Shift A, go going to the mesh section and choosing the plane. Then I press tab and I press S to scale it down. Make sure that everything is selected. You can select everything by pressing A on your keyboard and scale it down. And yeah, just like that. Right now I'm going to start the modeling by sharing some tips with you all, sharing some shortcuts basically that you can model anything else with them. Right now I'm going to start modeling and after a while I'll just speed up the video not to waste your time. So I think the most important shortcuts in modeling is one, two, three on your keyboard, not on your numpad because you can switch between vertex modes like you can select vertices and just pressing G to move them and press 2 to change to edge mode you can select edges in this mode and press 3 on your keyboard to just select all the faces like when you have a lot of faces this becomes very useful and you can also change between those modes by clicking here like vertex mode edge mode and face mode the next shortcuts are coming like this like I press G to move my object or move my vertex or move my edge and i press s to scale an element anything you like like i can select these two vertices and press s to scale them and another shortcut is for rotation which is r you can press r to rotate your objects and press e to extrude them and you can press e to extrude them you know i press e i just left click and i press e again e again and this is basically how we are going to model this a letter so i just press ctrl z to undo everything and I press everything, I press S, I press G to move my object. I just put it right here maybe, maybe somewhere right here. And I just select these two vertices, I press E to extrude them out. Leave them somewhere like maybe not there, somewhere like here. And also another shortcut is Control R to just add a loop cut just like that. I add these loop cuts in order to like extrude this one and these shortcuts are very useful just when you know them you know how to deal with everything also another shortcut is double G just to slide your edge or slide your vertices like I select this vertex I press double G and I can slide it towards this other vertices and I can also slide it towards these two vertices and which is very helpful. You can also hold alt and select an edge to just select the whole loop. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are in the vertex mode or edge mode. You can just hold alt and select an edge like this. So yeah, I just press double G to maybe move these. So yeah there was some mistakes here i'm just fixing them just like that i had a loop cut right here and as you can see now i'm modeling the white part of this letter i just selecting vertices moving them extruding them and doing all those stuffs and just like that maybe somewhere like here and something like this select an edge just extrude it scale it place it and after that we can add some loop cuts to fix the other vertices positions and yeah basically the whole thing is like that and 
maybe and probably I'm going to speed up the video right now because I think you get the point and I don't want to waste your time and make this video so long so yeah I'll catch up to you after the modeling So for some parts like here when you need to fill a gap or maybe join two parts of the object you just need to make those edges align with each other and I just select these two and I press F you can see now we have just one single object which is great and we are going to continue the modeling Just in case if you want to save a project, press Ctrl S and choose a location, then save it. Just not to miss all of your hard work you've done. And yeah, let's move on for now. After we got done with the modeling, you can press Shift Alt Z to just turn off the show overlay option you can see it's a shortcut and also the shortcut of the x-ray mode is uh, is alt z i hope that you've known these because i didn't explain them in the first of the video i'm sorry i forgot and yeah it's easy you can find them with the search though and yeah after you got done completely with the modeling you go there and press shift alt z and alt z and you can see your model also, you can just turn on this show overlay option and turn off your reference image. And this object is really good. I like it. And right now, I need to model another object, the yellow part, which is quite easy. I just hide my main object from here, from the outliner. And I'm going to press Shift A again at the plane and go to edit mode, scale down just like that and this time I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier from the modifier properties I'm going to add a modifier in the generate section which is called subdivision surface just make sure the both render and level viewports are at 3 and let's model our object for now so it becomes a little easier and smoother when we have a subdivision surface modifier applied on our object and I'm just going to scale down you can see I can rotate it and when I scale, when I extrude it, you can see we have something here going on and I just going to do the same process but because this time I have a subdivision surface modifier, I can just be more loose and maybe forget about all of the details because it will get the job done and we don't need to be very like obsessive in modeling with a subdivision surface modifier so so yeah now i'm just going to do the same process we did last time to model this yellow part of my object and after we got done we just move on to apply the materials and we are almost done let's get it So my model is almost done and obviously it's not a perfect model and well made and like uh, with a correct topology and so on but you can do yourself and I didn't want to spend so much time on this so I just made something that we can work on it for now and maybe just flatten some parts like this in order to make my model perfect not perfect but better you know better is always better than worse. <laughs> What did I say, man? Yeah, something like this maybe will get the job done for now. So the next step is adding subdivision. So then the next step is adding solidify modifiers. I just go here in the modifier properties. I click on add modifier and I choose solidify modifier. I make the offset up to one. And I also add another subdivision surface modifier just like this. And you can see it's smooth and I just right click I choose shade smooth 
and maybe for now I can decrease this levels viewport and render viewport to 2 yeah it's smoother now and maybe increase this up to nah I'm just gonna leave it at 1 just like that you can see the topology from the wireframe and maybe just enter a value like 0.005 for the thickness of the solidify modifier maybe this is sounds good and I'm going to unhide my other objects I think it's yeah it's inside of this object I'm going to move it up by pressing G and Z while it's selected and before adding a solidify modifier to this object I'm going to add a vertex group to it I just press tab to go to the edit mode I press ctrl R right here I add a loop cut I add a loop cut right here I add another one here and here and these loop cuts are going to do something interesting for us uh, for now just select all of them just press shift alt and select this and this one and this edge after that go ahead and deselect all of these first vertices that are out of the object I mean which are in the border maybe I don't know what we call it in the border of the object and I'm just going to deselect them by holding shift and clicking on them just like that and yeah also deselect this one and also this one maybe go to the top view by pressing 7 on your numpad and yeah and deselect this one just like that go to the object properties or object data properties and add a vertex group and assign all of these vertices into this vertex group and rename it to center and yeah after that go back to the object mode by pressing tab go to the modifier properties and add a solidify modifier right here make the offset up to 1 and right now press ctrl 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier and right click and choose shade smooth maybe set this level viewport and render to 3 and after that I'm going to choose the vertex group I've just created from here and just like that you can see it will give us an effect like this which is really cool isn't it because right now the solidify modifier is only applied on this vertex group and it also has a, and it also has a factor which we can play with it and maybe get a gradient of the effect when it's applied on only this vertex group and when it's applied on all of the other vertices and so on and yeah i really like this i just save it and i move my object down just like that in this tutorial, I'm not going to model that other part of this A's model, the black part, the black stroke basically, but you can do that, maybe it will turn out good, and yeah, it depends on you. For now, I'm just going to edit this object a bit, ah, I forgot to maybe make this more beautiful, make this more sharper, maybe something like this and make it more exact basically exact to our reference image it just needs some time but the more you spend time on these modeling stuffs the better your result will be uh, yeah i'm happy with it right now and uh, maybe and uh, yeah i like it but as you can see it needs some additions like these parts of the object has became very smooth and we need to add some loop cuts maybe maybe just you know add one loop cut here and press ctrl b to just bevel it and to just sharpen these edges and add one loop cut here just like that add another one here and here And yeah, just like that, I liked it so much. And by the way, you can also do the same that we did with the vertex group and so on with this object. But I modeled it so bad that I cannot apply that effect here. Just make sure that you keep everything clean so that you can apply the other effect on this object as well. It will turn out good. And yeah, I experienced it. 
so yeah that's my recommendation it's on you how and how much time you got let's move on to the second let's move on to the next step which is applying the modifiers I just go to the shading workspace and i zoom in to my objects i also hide my reference image from here and also i can select it i press m i move it to a new collection that is called reference and i just disable it from here now we don't see it anymore in our renders in our scene anything and i just select one of my objects i add a new material and i select the principal bscf and before i do anything in node editor and before i do anything in the node editor i need to go to the edit menu preferences and choose and go to the add-on section and search for node wrangler add-on you just need to turn it out from here and now if i go here and select my principal bscf node and then I press Control Shift T. You can see a menu will pop up, which is really cool. Now I, I'm going to use a PBR texture. I have it in my folders. I've downloaded this texture from the website CG Bookcase. A shout out to them. And I'll just leave this link in the description. For now, just select the base color, normal and roughness, and maybe height. I'm not going to select it. You can select it if you want. And then I just click here after that you will see nothing because our object is not uv unwrapped i just press tab i press a to select everything i press u and i choose unwrap and yeah now it's working properly i just go to the top view maybe i rotate this in the z-axis by 90 degrees and i also scale this up to just have more details and maybe smaller stitches. You can also make it smaller like 1.5 or even 1. It depends on you and your project. And yeah, that's that's fine. If you want to change the color, which I want. Uh, first of first, I'm going to name this material to black fabric maybe. Or something like that. Or black, black jean. Uh, but for now, I'm going to name it just black fabric. And I'm going to apply the same material to my second object from here. And for this object, I'm going to make another copy from it and I'm going to name it black fabric because I'm going to make this one white. But before that, I'm going to select this object, press tab to go to the edit mode, press A and U and U will unwrap it. After that, I select my letter, I name it white fabric. And after that, I press shift A in the node editor. I search for a mixed color node and I put it right here. I use the base color as a factor for this node and I just make this B color darker as you can see. And for now, if you just change this color to any color, you can see it will change the main color, which I'm going to leave it at white and a brighter white maybe and maybe just increase the strength of the normal map to something like two i think we're kind of done with this tutorial if you want to attach this object to your clothes to your hats etc i've made another video about it which you can go and see it on my youtube channel but in that video the shape of the object is a little different as you can see right here it's a little more like puff and a little bigger but i've told everything you need to know to pull this off and make something like this or even like this and as you can see in that video i didn't make this background bigger than the object it's just like a stroke which is really cool and yeah that was almost everything guys thanks for watching i hope you liked this video and you learned something useful from it and if so please subscribe to the channel like the video comment it and maybe share it with your friends if you think that they will find it useful wish you the best stay tuned for the next take care